Right, well, let's talk to someone you'll know well at the Free Speech Union. Of course, you work there as well. Uh, Bryn Harris, he's chief legal counsel at the Free Speech Union. Again, I'm going to declare, of which I'm a member as well. I don't know why anyone isn't a member, frankly. It's such an important issue. Good morning to you, Bryn. Morning, Julia. Thank you so much for joining us. I mean, there's loads of different things to unravel here. Look, we, we know already, you know, we've seen this dossier being fully released by Nigel Farage yesterday. We're going to talk to him a little bit later on the show about it personally. But basically, it's unraveled. Coote said it was he didn't have enough money in his account. That's why they got rid of his account or planning to. Uh, but actually, it wasn't. It was because they didn't like his political views. Uh, xenophobic, racist, two of the words that were used in that 40-page dossier. First of all, what do you make of the decision of someone to, of a bank, to cancel an account holder because of their political views. Is that legal? Is it illegal? Well, I mean, there's been a lot of rather weak attempts to justify this, saying that, well, you know, banks have a contract with their customers and they can do as they please. And it's rubbish. Don't don't buy it for a second. You know, our law absolutely prioritizes clarity and certainty. And you know, the common law despises arbitrary conduct. And this is entirely arbitrary you know the only way this could be justifiable is if your terms of service are absolutely crystal clear and say something like in red bold writing you know if you're a brexiteer we might ditch you you know that's the sort of but would, would that even be legal i mean that's the thing i don't understand because if they said we you know we won't serve you we, w we won't provide you with a bank account and we won't deal with you if you're gay that would be illegal that's a protected characteristic um if you're you know if you if you're black or you don't like you because you're a woman or whatever that would be illegal and quite rightly um but 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 are are people's political views protected in the law in, in the same way not, not in themselves. So if your political view uh, constitutes a philosophical belief, uh, and, you know, arguably Brexit might in one way or another... Belief in democratic might... accountability, I would think, is a pretty fundamental philosophical belief. Absolutely. I mean, and, and I think you'd have a good chance trying that, certainly before the right judge. Um, you could probably say that's a philosophical okay. belief. But the point is, is that political beliefs in and of themselves... Um, don't have the protection you're talking about. But nevertheless, even without that protection, you know, the law demands clarity and the law despises arbitrariness. And this is very, very clearly okay. arbitrary. Well, this thing, it certainly is arbitrary, but one of the things I find is worrying is a number of people are saying, oh, well, they should have made it clear and they should have to give more notice. There was some talk that Jeremy Hunt, the Chancellor, say they need to give three months' notice, not one month, and they need to be explicit about the reasons why and they need to be clear. Uh, that's not good enough for me. I just think it should be very, very simple. You're not allowed. It's none of your sodding business if you're a bank, what someone's political views are, if they are legal. And if someone, if someone is committing a criminal act, you're entitled to close down the account. But as we've discovered since this affair became known you, you could be a murderer you could be behind bars and they don't close down your bank account you can be you can run i mean there's some, you know, there are terrorist organizations that have bank accounts for goodness sakes um i mean some very 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 dodgy people an awful lot of very questionable russian mafia and others have held bank accounts some of them by the way uh, you know with 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 banks like coots uh, what do you make of these this talk i mean a few of the front pages are saying this that banks face this crackdown within days um an emergency law change so an emergency Amendment to some existing laws going through, or existing bill going through Parliament, um, to to basically to protect uh, the free speech of customers. Um, basically saying that yeah, banks could even lose their license if they continue to do this. Is that a something you think they will do? B, would that be strong enough action to be taken? So yeah, we've been campaigning for this for a long time because it happened to us uh, with PayPal, as as you may remember. The noises that we're hearing from, from Sunak, from Shaps, from Braverman are welcome. I think they're asking for the right things, but there's something that is missing, and that is that um, they need to make sure that uh, doing this would be so punitive in terms of the damages that the customer could claim, and in terms of the regulatory fines, it needs to be so punitive that no bank in its right mind would ever try to do this again. Now, as it stands at the moment, you know, I, I, I think it's very true to say that if Coots mishandled personal data or if, you know, they handled your cookies wrongly, yeah. you know, there'd be a greater risk to them yeah. uh, than there would be for cancelling you because of your politics. So that is the sort of 
the terror effect yeah. that we need. Yeah, I, I think it needs to. I do think it needs to go further. That just to be said, you're not allowed to do it. End of. Let's have a little listen to some of the politicians who did speak up on this, including the prime minister himself. A prime minister's questions yesterday. This was raised by two different uh, uh, backbench, well now backbench MPs, former Brexit secretary David Davis. He first raised the issue of coups. This is what he had to say in PMQs yesterday. The opposition politician he was referring to, of course, was Nigel Farage, whose bank account was closed, not because he was a PEP, not because of commercial reasons, but because his views did not align with the values of Coote's bank. A thinly veiled political discrimination, a vindictive, irresponsible and undemocratic action. But in addition, NatWest also disclosed confidential details about Farage's account to the BBC and lied about the commercial viability of his account actions which ought to jeopardise its banking licence and should certainly worry NatWest's 19 million other customers. Um, let's also hear what Jacob rees Mulga had to say as well. He called on the Prime Minister to act. Will he use the government's shareholding to ensure that there is an inquiry into these circumstances because the subject data access request makes it clear or certainly indicates that it is the person concerns political views that led to his cancellation. And does my right hon friend agree with me that however much we may find however much we may find them tiresome, members of the opposition deserve bank accounts. And <laughs> this was point about the Labour MPs there. Uh, let's hear also what Rishi Sunak, the Prime Minister, had to say in response to Jacob B. Smog's question. It wouldn't be right if financial services were being denied to anyone exercising their right to lawful free speech. Uh, our new Financial Services and Markets Act put, puts in place new measures to ensure that politically exposed persons are being treated in an appropriate and proportionate manner. And having consulted on the payment services regulations, we are, we are in the process of cracking down on this practice by tightening the rules around account closures. So lots of uh, lots of condemnation there, Bryn Harris uh, from the Free Speech Union. Suella Braverman, also the Home Secretary, uh, referred to this as being quite sinister. Um, in terms of the action to be taken, you say it needs to be punitive. It needs to be something to make them take uh, take uh, uh, pay attention to it and take serious action. Are you confident that anything will happen, or do you think this will be a big row? We all talk about it for a few days, and then it just quietly goes on. But the next person they cancel won't have you know millions of followers on Twitter and be able and a TV show and be able to publicise it. Well, it's possible, and it wouldn't be the first time that we've seen a government with a majority of 70 uh, uh, waste that opportunity. Um, now, you know, I, the, the MPs there, David Davis, was mentoring, you know, the, the, the leverage that the government alway, already has in terms of its shareholding in Coots. Uh, and I think really what we need to see is um, those ministers who have the bit between their teeth, including the city minister, Andrew Griffiths, mm -hmm. Um, they, they really need to make good on this. And that means, you know, if uh, civil servants quibble, well, you know, get a second opinion. If government lawyers uh, quibble about whether this is lawful or not, you know, get better legal advice, go to independent counsel. The, you know, there needs to be a real, because they, they grasp the right and the wrong of this. They understand as well as we do that this is arbitrary and it's yeah. abuse of power. Now, you know, the next phase is seeing through on that. That means using the political power yeah. this majority has and listening to the right people. Don't, you know, don't be put off course. No, exactly. like, my, my big worry, if they don't deal with it under the Tory government, if we do have a Labour government next year, you know, they're, they're quite happy with people being cancelled. They, they, as long as they're people they disagree with, you know, they were quite happy, a lot of them, you know, Nigel Farage being milkshaked in the street because, well, they didn't like him, so it was OK. Um, what do you make also of these revelations that the chief exec of NatWest, Dame Alison Rose, what a surprise, staunch Remainer, I mean, shocker, um, that she apparently sat next to the BBC's political, sorry, I keep saying political, business editor, uh, Simon Jack, the night before his story emerged, claiming that, no, the reason why Coots had closed Nigel Farage's account, nothing to do with his political views, it was because he hadn't reached the deposit threshold in his current account of a, of a million pounds. Um, now, if that story came from her, he had said Coots sources, Coots sources are familiar with the decision. If she'd seen that dossier and knew perfectly well there was no financial reason for his account to be closed and knew that it was really this political reason, and she, if, she, if it was her who passed this information on, she lied... I mean, it's untenable for her to remain in that job, isn't it? Well, I mean, you know, Coots is just sort of hanging itself multiple times over now. Yeah. Uh, you know, obviously, there's there's a breach of confidence here, uh, uh, compounding it. There's the dishonesty 
and, and this isn't just a failure to give reasons. Uh, it's giving essentially false yeah. and, and lying reasons. So absolutely, they are racking up uh, uh, the trouble that they're facing. Which is, which is funny because they claimed it was reputational damage that they were risking by having Nigel Farage as a customer. That's worked out well, hasn't it? Yeah, I mean, we, we, we see that all the time, this misuse of disrepute. It, it's the it's the first, you know, resort of the scoundrel who wants to ditch someone, you know, because they're not woke enough or, or whatever. Absolutely. Uh, absolute rubbish. No, no organisation in its right mind would do something so clearly disreputable as this. Well, yeah, indeed. Well, they're clearly not in their right mind. Uh, Bryn Harris, Chief Legal Counsel at Free Speech Union. Thank you for that. Just